Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Wonder Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at another one of my rather favorite wonders, the Venetian Arsenal. So to unlock the Venetian Arsenal, all you have to do is research the mass production technology, which does make it a Renaissance era wonder, just like all the other ones we've been talking about recently. To get the Eureka for mass production, it is very simple, more simple than a lot of the other Renaissance era techs, and that's all you have to do is put down a lumber mill on any woods or rainforest tile, so this is something that hopefully will be a little bit more common since the last patch uh, buffed the lumber mills quite a bit. Oh, maybe not quite a bit, but I can't even remember. It might have been two patches ago by this point already. I don't even remember at this point. Um, but either way, very easy to build a lumber mill. All you have to have is one woods tile anywhere in your empire and a builder. Just plop one of those things down and you will get the Eureka for mass production, which means you're pretty much going to have this in every single game. Unless you're crazy and you don't build lumber mills, which I highly recommend you do now because lumber mills are really good. <laughs> Uh, once you research mass production, though, the building requirements for Venetian Arsenal are as follows. They are a little bit more difficult to achieve than some of the other wonders, so all you have to do is put it on a coast tile that is adjacent to an industrial zone district. This is a little bit more complex than the other wonders, just because you actually kind of have to consciously look to get this, you know, to unlock this building requirement, because obviously you have to put an industrial zone next to a coast tile. This often isn't the best thing just because of where you get adjacency bonus for bonuses for industrial zones. A lot of the time they're not going to be super high on the coast unless you have, you know, like an aqueduct next to it or a dam or something like that. Um, but either way, it still is very easy to do as long as you're consciously aware of it. And if you want to build a Venetian arsenal, then chances are you'll at least be looking out for it and you'll, you'll make sure that you create some spots where you can put down the Venetian arsenal. It also does have a production cost of 920 production, which is standard for all the Renaissance era wonders. As far as the Venetian Arsenal's bonuses are concerned, it has two, and uh, they're both pretty straightforward. So for one, you will get plus two great engineer points per turn. Plus two really is not all that many. I mean, sure, it's nice, but it's it's not you know like a ton. It's not gonna it's not gonna all of a sudden you know jump you up very far in the lead for great engineer points or anything. But it is a nice thing to have. Uh, but the really big bonus here that I think is really strong is that you will receive a second free naval unit every time you finish producing one. So this means, say you build a battleship, instead of building one battleship, you build two. And the really, really OP thing about this is that it works for uh, armadas and fleets as well. So if you build, say, a battleship armada, then you get a second battleship armada totally for free. So this is absolutely insane if you're going domination victory, uh, especially naval domination victory. So depending on what map type you're playing on, the Venetian Arsenal can give you such an insane naval power boost uh, that works really well with some civs. And then you can just use it to absolutely obliterate everybody else on the map that has coastal cities. So Venetian Arsenal's bonus is very, very strong. And now it is time to give the Venetian Arsenal its wonder rating. So if you're new to the series, all you really need to know here is that all of these ratings go on a 1 to 5 scale, with 5 being the best and 1 being the worst. So for its overall rating, I think that the Venetian Arsenal deserves a 5. I'm sure a lot of people are going to riot right now and complain because I didn't give Forbidden City a 5. Okay, so this is like, you know, post, post-production post thing. Sure, the Forbidden City gets a 5. All right, I, I messed up. It should get a 5 too. But Venetian Arsenal as well gets a 5. I really think it is one of the strongest wonders in the game for a certain use case. All right, so that's like the big asterisk next to the, the next to the 5 here. So the use case, obviously, is that if you want to get an insane naval power increase, you're going to build Venetian Arsenal. But the power increase that you get from it uh, is just absolutely ridiculous. You can spam out fleets and armadas so fast with Venetian Arsenal that it makes it so that you can overpower pretty much anybody else in the game uh, navally. Some of the drawbacks to this, though, are, for one, uh, naval combat has always been, or naval domination itself has always been a little bit iffy just because it's very easily countered, because how do you counter naval domination? Just don't settle on the coast, <laughs> you know? It's a, it's a very easy thing to do. Um, but on certain map types, like Archipelago or Arch Archipelago, as some of you may say, um, then then uh, this is absolutely just a pretty much a game-breaking wonder if you're playing a naval domination civ. You pretty much instantly win the naval domination victory if you build Venetian Arsenal. So for that reason, I think it deserves the 5 rating. It does have some other drawbacks that I'd like to talk about. Um, so for one of them, you actually do have to be careful um, in terms of resources, just because it can be very easy to accidentally build too many naval units whenever you have Venetian Arsenal, because obviously if you're going to get two for every one you build, you can a lot of the time run out of your, you know, say oil per turn very fast just because you accidentally build too many naval units. Same thing with gold per turn in terms of maintenance cost. It's very easy to accidentally, you know, run over your, you know, like just uh, like accrue a bunch of 
maintenance costs that you otherwise wouldn't want to accrue just by accidentally building too many units, but it's both a problem and a curse. Uh, worst comes to worst, you can always just, wow, that rhymed way too well. But worst comes to worst, you can always just delete the extra units that you get if you are really, you know, uh, hurting for strategic resources. But even so, I still think this wonder deserves a 5. As far as its difficulty rating, uh, things are also very good here. I think it deserves a 2. The AI very rarely seem to build Venetian Arsenal. There are some cases where they will, and I find that if they have the opportunity to, they will. But the issue for them is mostly that they don't, a lot of the time, consciously set up to build, uh, to get the building requirements for Venetian Arsenal. So in a lot of games, they're not going to put Industrial Zone on the coast, or that's next to a coast tile. So they're just not going to have any tiles that they can put Venetian Arsenal on. So it's pretty easy to get Venetian Arsenal as long as you're consciously going for it, even, in a, even in, on a deity game. So for that reason, I think it deserves the two. And for its consistency rating, I think it deserves a 4. I contemplated giving it a 5 here, but I ended up going with a 4 just because, really, um, whenever it comes to consistency, sure, it does what it's going to do in every single game. The thing that's inconsistent about it is how useful that's going to be for you in any given game, just because if you're not going, if you're going anything other than naval domination, then Venetian Arsenal gets a lot less good. I mean, it can still be really nice if you're going just, you know, any type of domination, or if you really need to build yourself a defensive navy, it still can be good, but um, the, the, the area where it really shines is, is in uh, aggressive naval domination. So just because it's not widespread to a bunch of different victory types or strategies, that's why I think it deserves a 4 rather than a 5. So thank you all for watching. I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.